hopefully this is recording. Second attempt on this. Uh, we're going to talk about the cruise control. Right? So, you hit this button on the side right here, which is what turns the cruise control on. And what activates it is this button over here. You hit set. Cruise control is on. Right? Target speed is reached. Now if you want to increase the speed, you hit the up button over here. We're at 62, so I'm going to keep pressing the button. 63, 64, 65. Okay, you just went up to 67. You want to go down. Hit that, and it'll go down. If you hold it down, it'll keep going down. If you just tap it real quick, it'll go down by one mile per hour. It's basically like a uh, cruise control you find in your car. And I'm going to bump it up. I'm going to bump it up because I'm going to go with the flow of traffic. Even the flow of traffic sucks though, but you know. But that's how it works. I'm going to back it down a little bit. Okay. And to stop it, you hit the mode button. There you go. Turns it off. Bad time of day to do this. I tried earlier. But as a lot of you guys know, GoPros a lot of times really suck. So I was dealing with that buffoonery. We're going to pull over here. Actually, we're going to go the back way, get off the highway. Because it's uh, that time of day. Let's put it that way. Another thing about this bike, it's extremely easy and stable to, to stand up on. Great position. Great riding position. Pegs are great. They are covered in rubber. But you can pop that out. Oh, here's the spot right over here. Hopefully you can see. And I hope this is recording. Let's get in the shade. You should still be able to see. Alrighty, gloves off. Let's see. We're going to start at the front of the motorcycle, the new 2022. Let's do a quick walk around so you can see it. Looks a lot like the pictures, but I can tell you guys that it um, looks a little better in person. Um, starting out the front. These are tubeless wheels. These are DID supplied spoke rims, which are kind of cool. My only concern is uh, maybe cleaning them out someday if I get any kind of mud. Uh, that could be an issue, but they're really cool. I'm going to zoom in. You can see kind of how this thing is done. I'll just get closer to them. And uh, pretty cool. There's your traction control ABS, or excuse me, ABS sensor. Uh, about six and a half inches of travel, maybe seven, I think, somewhere around there. Um, the adjusters. This is rebound up here. You turn this screw. This is your spring preload. And the compression adjustment is down here. So you have this point and up there. Um, of course, LED headlights, LED turn signals. Not real crazy about the windscreen so far. Um, I have been getting buffeting, but that's, that'll be an easy swap if I decide to change that out. Uh, the accessory bar right here. I love it. Absolutely love it. As you can see, I've got the mount for the GPS. i turn that on. I've also got the mount for the uh, other camera, the DJI. Works great. I put my phone over here. That's something that came with a DJI, a DJI uh, Osmo. Okay, also adjustable levers. You can adjust how far these are out with these adjusters. Um, it does have a what they call a quick start. If it's in neutral, turn it on. 
You don't need to pull the clutch in and it's supposed to start quicker or something. And it does work. Um, turn this back on. Going over here. Comes with these uh, really nice lights. Accessory lights. The thing I don't like about them though is they're kind of big. And I'm concerned at some point I go down a trail, have an oopsie, a boo-boo or whatever. Uh, I'm concerned they might get kind of smacked or crushed. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But with my riding ability, don't be surprised if it does. Um, mirrors. The mirrors are great. Uh, they're extended far out, and you can see they're literally, well, I guess that depends how you adjust them, but they're out far enough to where you can really see around you. Um, I'm kind of a wide guy. I wear a padded jacket, so it kind of blocks. But it does great as far as seeing the traffic behind you in both lanes. Um, 5.3 gallon tank, 20 liters. Um, it's it's great. I've never, I think I got low one time. Um, and on the indicator, it'll start flashing if you're getting low on fuel. With that segue, let's go to the, to the dashboard here. Okay, I'm going to start from up here. That's your, your miles per hour. That's your fuel gauge. You can see it. Fuel gauge is there. Miles per gallon. And this is how I have it set. There's different modes you can set. You can do odometer stuff. You can do how much, what your fuel mileage is averaged. Also, I have uh, right there uh, 158 miles till I'm empty, which that's of right now. You know, that's based on past historical fuel mileage. If I get, if I get on the throttle, it's going to be more. Yeah, or it's going to be less, excuse me. Um, traction control stuff. All you do is right here. Suzuki Drive Management System. There's your traction control. And there's different settings. Off, 1, 2, and 3. And all that does is provide you with different inputs. Traction, or ABS. It goes 1 and 2. You can't turn it off, which for some that's going to be a, an upsetting thing. But for me, it's okay. Of course, temperatures in there, pretty much everything you need, and you can switch it around different menus. I'm not going to go through that because it will definitely put you to sleep. Okay, moving on. Uh, the engine. Um, it's got a really, really torquey, smooth engine, and very linear power. It's great. I love it. Um, it is well balanced. This is a well balanced bike. It feels a little heavy when you first get on it, but as soon as you start moving, you can. It really feels great. It really does. It's very maneuverable. Also, the XT Adventure comes with these. Actually, the XT does. The XT Adventure comes with the lights, but these uh, accessory bars they call it. Some people might call them crash bars. Um, these are nice. You mount the lights on there, and all they they also provide some protection for the engine. One of the issues is though, if you get this, you can't buy the Suzuki, the stock parts uh, that they offer as far as skid plates, stuff like that. I had to go with a Hepco and Becker. That was the only one that I found that would fit this crash bar setup. Um, going back to the engine though, and the clutch, it has an a, a assist clutch. It's very smooth. It's a hydraulic clutch, but it has some assist in there that makes it very easy to shift. Very easy to shift. Very smooth too. The seat. Yeah, the seat. Very, very uh, soft but firm. It's been great. I've done uh, a few longer trips on it, and it has, it's been actually pretty comfortable. As comfortable as the seat concept seat I have on my DR650. Has this gripper stuff on the side. That's to give you a little better feeling when you're uh, up off the tank and you're using your legs to grip. Moving backwards, let me grab this real quick. Under the seat. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. It has a USB plug up here, which I've used. Hopefully you can see it. I've used that for GPS, which was mounted here. I've also used it for the phone. You can do whatever you want to with it. Going back here. Seat comes right off. Documents, stuff like this, license registration, all that stuff. You also have another plug here. It's like a cigarette lighter plug, and you can put a USB adapter in there. Tools are in there. Um, I mean, tools, you know, probably not much. I opened them up once. There wasn't much in there. Okay, suspension in the back. You've got a hydraulic adjuster that you can adjust. 
and it clicks to give you reference points. The compression and dampening is at the bottom of the shock down there. It has a center stand, which is great if you need to do chain maintenance, or fortunately, hopefully, you don't have to change your retire, but it'll help with that. Also, let's talk about the panniers and the pannier rack. Okay, let's see these. They are huge. They're 37 liter panniers. Okay, and guys, for reference, not that this has ever happened, but you can literally fit a case of beer in each one of these panniers with room left over. Reference point, right? They're nice. They are waterproof. They seal up nicely. And also, they remove quite easily. I just have to kind of wiggle it out of there. That's new. There's a certain way to do it. And here's the racks. One of the cool things about the rack, it's got these rubber isolators everywhere. So I, I, it just it seems like it provides a little better cushioning or something. It doesn't keep things from rattling around. Uh, maybe less in vibration. I don't know, but it's just kind of cool that they have this. And you can also, of course, mount your soft panniers, your soft bags if you want. Let's get this on here. Goes on pretty easy too. And of course, they secure for trips, which will make a good, uh, a good bit of difference if you're out in a city somewhere or you're someplace where people are stealing stuff. Uh, the panniers are kind of high, if you look at it, right? They're high. That's good and bad. Now, if you're gonna load the crap out of those panniers, it's bad. But if you're gonna use lightweight stuff, like I do, think of uh, backpacking with two wheels, it's not gonna make that much difference. Another good thing about it is, if you're off-road and you have to dab, or your leg gets caught, it's higher up before your leg would hit that, so it might prevent some damage to your leg. Um, exhaust is up, you know, it's, it's tucked in a little bit. I can tell you, I, I'm not crazy about, you know, kind of sticks out. An advantage if it was higher in case of a, you know, spill or oopsie or a, a flop or whatever, you know what I mean? That would be kind of preferable, but overall it's good. It's got this protector on there, so, and this right here too. Um, hopefully that is never going to be tested out. Um, and then talk about appearance. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you uh, the number of compliments I get on this bike. It's kind of funny. And it might be because it looks a lot different than a lot of the other bikes out there. Um, there are some similarities. You can say it's got a beak like a GS, but, yeah, you know, there's a lot of different things. Um, negatives, I talked about a couple of them. One of them is ground clearance. Um, it's got enough, I believe. Um, I, I would like a little bit more, but again, I am spoiled with the DR650, so that's my perspective. So maybe it's just me. Uh, I know I'm going to forget something, and I apologize ahead of time. Oh, one thing I did I do need to, to mention. When you adjust the chain, and this was told to me by Alan at the uh, Honda dealership, a lot of people, because this chain is pretty loose, right? Mine's close to being adjusted. They over-adjust it. The, the way the swing arm works, when it goes up, as in weight, you put weight on it, it's going to go up, right? The angle. Um, it puts a lot of pressure on the counter shaft bearing. So if you over tighten it, it's going to it's going to really screw up that bearing. That's a common problem they've had. People over tightening the, the chains. So I think that's about it, uh, except for one thing. These are kind of crappy. These are not bark busters. These are something. I don't know. That's going to end up getting replaced with some real bark busters. But you know, it's a cosmetic thing. But anyway, overall, guys, it's a great bike. I love it. Inspires confidence when you ride it down the road. I've had it on some trails. Sorry I didn't record it, but I did. You're going to have to take my word for it. It does well. I think part of that's because it's balanced really, really well. Um, it uh, Back to the motor. 106 horsepower. I can't remember how much torque. Um, larger throttle bodies. 10 injection holes per cylinder. So it's got a lot of juice, and it's... It, it runs great. This one I've got about 1,400 miles on now. Yeah, 13.99, and I, I just absolutely love it. So there's a few negatives, but overall it's a great bike. And uh, one of the things that's really neat about it is that cruise control. And I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever need it, but on a couple of long trips, I'll give you an example. I was going up Interstate 26 from Spartanburg, North, uh, South Carolina up to Asheville area, North Carolina, on Interstate 26, and I was cruising 75, 
cruise control on, long sweeping turns going up and down uh, in the mountains as far as elevation going up and down. Smooth as butter. Absolutely pleasurable. It does help. So with that said, I'm going to have to get back to the house and uh, I have another bike to ride tonight, supposedly. So hey guys, I do appreciate you watching. Oh, that feels good. Get some air on me. It's kind of warm today. Uh, temperature says 78 degrees. Just probably going to upset some of you guys. But yeah, great bike. Love it. Highly recommend it. Again, uh, depending on what your mission is, what's your purpose, you know, that's what I'm saying. For me, this fits perfect. Long distance road travel, some trails, fire service roads, light trails and stuff like that. It's perfect for me. But your requirements may be different. Um, it's not going to be as capable off-road as, say, a GS1250, you know, something like that. But, you know, it's a lot less. This thing was... Uh, 18,000 out the door. That's with all the accessories you've seen except for the two added protection items Which was the skid plate and the radiator guard and by the way radiator guard is key. You need to get one of those um, Oh, yeah larger cooling this year, too, by the way, I forgot to mention that But anyway, that's kind of a rundown. I've only had it for a little while put a few a uh, few hundred miles on it But really enjoy it um, In comparison to the DR650 this will do things the DR can't, and the DR will definitely do things this can't. So it's kind of filling in capability gaps. Shut this. Okay.